Hello everyone and welcome back to the letter where we're having lunch with friends I think is where we're at. Oh, I thought we were getting murdered and stuffed into a couch. Yeah, well that too. Oh, is that does that come after the lunch with friends? Th that's yeah, but spoilers, come on. Oh, sorry folks. Ash on the other hand couldn't be reached. All of my calls went straight to his voicemail. He's at it again, right here today, gone the next. Oh well, his loss. We've agreed to meet at a nearby cafe, the same one I frequent with Becca because it's cheap and they give away free bread around closing time. Oh. Quaint, a little old-fashioned, though looks a wee bit out of place amidst the city's tall buildings, but we love it all the same. Much like its facade, the interior carries an antiquated charm to it. Vintage art pieces in a row of shelves boasting an extensive collection of books cover the walls. It would have been nice to hang out here for hours on end, but even on a weekend, the place is still packed with people. Thankfully, Becca and Zach have already found seats and are engaged in some casual chatter when I arrive. It's strange seeing the two of them without Ash accompanying the other. They've never been particularly close. Sure, they talk when they meet, laugh at the same things when there's something funny, but there's distance. The kind born purely out of differing interests. That or Zach's simply afraid of Becca. I wouldn't blame him. It's not impossible, and I won't blame him if he is. He might be the tallest in our group, but everyone knows that it means nothing against Becca's temper. Even I am a little scared of her. Zach, well, nope. you seem to be in a better mood today. What happened? Oh, she just says Zach. Zach, Becca. Becca. There you I go. know that smile, Belle. Come on, still. D don't rush me. Let's order food first, okay? Oh, Rachel comes by to take our order. I just made a bajillion dollars on the murder house. Yeah, you know, it's a good day. On a normal day, me and Becca will order a hearty serving of their special vegetarian stovies. Zach takes anything with a good helping of meat, sausages, or potatoes in it. But today's a good day. Great even. It's not wrong to indulge a little, right? Today's special. For the three of us. Even the person jotting down our order looks surprised at today's meal choice. She writes it nevertheless and leaves without a comment. Becca furrows her eyebrows, her mouth halfway open, ready to let loose what's likely a string of reprimands. Don't worry. It's my treat. The glare she sends my way reminds me of the one I received from Mama when I punched a kid bullying my younger brother 18 years ago. Naturally, I never did it again after she made me apologize the next day. Seriously? But Becca's far from being my mom. A small sheepish grin is enough to turn that frown into a defeated sigh. Food arrives in the middle of a funny story from Zach, putting the rest of the conversation on hold as we are each served our order. It isn't anything fancy. Pan-roasted sea bass with citrus-dressed asparagus and a portion of mashed potatoes on the side. Or at least that's what the Daily Specials board says. I never did pay any attention to it when I come here, since they price whatever is written way above what I'm willing to spend on food on a single day. Oh good. I'm so hungry I think I'm dying. Well, you should be always hungry. Hey! Not all the time. <laughs> Let me guess. You skipped breakfast again. Out of necessity cause because we they're, were- they're all breakfast noodles. Not on purpose. I may have overslept by a few seconds today. That added up to hours. Right then. Stop stalling, Isabella. What's this about? Let us say, Rebecca. She wouldn't be inviting us out if it wasn't worth hearing out. Yeah, why does she, like, assume something bad's going on? I mean, she should be happy that she's, like, treating them to... Well, we're waiting. Yeah. I kind of don't like Becca. She's I'm treating you guys to a once-in-a-century thing. We sold a murder house. An expected grin breaks out on my face, except... I I'm sorry, say that again. And this is important because... Becca only raises an eyebrow at me while Zach appears like he didn't get the punchline to another lame joke Ash made and is desperately searching for someone to explain it. Ash is not here, so we should celebrate. I think my instant noodle days are over. Okay, let me do that again. Guess what, guys? I'm paying! I sold the house! Alright, how did that How did that work out for... Oh! Okay. They both like that. I don't think it's I sold the house. It's we sold the house. You it's like the house sold itself, basically. Uh, that too. I was going to say, and you had to split it with um, Rose. As the news sinks in, their expression goes from sheer bewilderment to utter surprise. That's more you like You heard it. me right, ladies and gentlemen. As of today, I, Maria Isabella Grace Cruz Santos, am free from my instant noodle binge. Because I sold the murder house to an unsuspecting couple that will most likely get chopped up and put in a couch. Or are they unsuspecting? Maybe they know. Seriously? Hold it, Belle. You sold the house? Yep. Which house is this? In Anselm Village? The one with the open house yesterday? The one and only. Come on, Becca. I know you've got a better memory than that. Oh. Oh, wow. 
Uh, that's... Uh, sh wow. It doesn't seem very happy for us. No. It's because she know we sold the murder house? I'm wondering. She lets out a hum. Although she's nodding, she gives the impression of someone who has heard something unbelievable and is still forcing her brain to absorb it. Did she think we wouldn't be able to sell it? I, I guess that would be fair. Have some faith in me, Becca. Am I not your best friend or what? You don't believe me? The words tumble out of my mouth before I could stop them. I've been trying to avoid bringing up yesterday's little spat, and judging from the looks on their faces, it seems they are too. Me and my stupid mouth. I'm sure it ain't the way you're thinking, Bella. No, no, I do believe you. But uh, don't you think the sale happened a bit too fast? The open house only started yesterday, and now you already Who have cares? a buyer? You right, sold that's a good thing. House. Man, apparently you guys don't live in the nowadays where like a house sells in like five minutes unless you're there. Mm -hmm. It happens from time to time. It sure does. Yeah, but look, I'm happy for you. Just yesterday, you've been really worried where to get money for your dad's new treatment. And now, all of a sudden, you have something. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. That's typically something to be happy w about. What if the sale doesn't push through, or I don't know? They're a fraud, or they suddenly back out. Well, then I'm not gonna go spend it all in one place right now, Becca. Isn't it a little too early to celebrate? It's, that's, that's not entirely unfair, but, but it's come on. lunch. Yeah. Seriously, Becca it's not like I've bought you guys, though. like, Cadillacs. If you haven't closed the deal yet, there's still a chance they'll go back on it. I mean, but we did get, uh, an envelope full of money, so at least we have that. Mm, they don't seem like it to me. The lady appeared to really want it, and she approached me without even finishing the tour. Pressured me into it more like, but I'm not going to tell Becca about that. Knowing her, she'd only worry. And she already hired someone to handle the house's interior design. You're joking. Who would do that? The rights, apparently. It's actually pretty funny. She's a bit too excited to get the property. She forgot to buy it. At any rate, they've already signed the agreement today, so it's just a matter of time. And don't tell anyone about this, but Ma'am Hannah also gave us something extra. Something as in... Money. Money. <laughs> as in, it's why I can treat you two to a free meal. I'm more surprised you accepted it. She didn't really give us a choice in the matter. So don't lose sleep over this, okay? The couple really want the house. If Rose didn't stop them, they'd likely have paid up front for it yesterday. That's despite the legends, too. I even tried to show them the letter. But nope. I want this house, darling. Go take all our money. You don't really think they'd believe that, do you? I'm pretty sure for them, those are just rumors as well. No one is that superstitious okay. in this day and age, Belle. I'm having a real hard time with my friends here. So we go out and do a thing. And we're like, listen, we've pre-sold this house. Like, it's signed right now. And I have money to burn. So I bought you guys a nice lunch. Where you sit here and hypocritically kind of criticize me for treating them to lunch? Uh, I mean, <laughs> mostly Becca. Zach just kind of... But I he think kind of started it too after she kind of dug in like mm. 15 times. Yeah, I, I mean, I... He seems to have a, like a more grounded like... You know, don't count your chickens before they hatch sort of thing. Whereas like... Becca to me almost is, it comes across like she thinks uh, Isabella is getting scammed. I feel like she doesn't have a nice thing to say about us whatsoever. I don't think I've had one nice comment come out of her mouth about us, which is an interesting relationship for us, quote unquote, unquote best friend. Yeah. All right. Let's Sorry. see. <laughs> well, there's you. Right. You know what? I'll just eat all of these by myself. There we go. We began to gather the plates to my side, the food in each still untouched. A laugh almost escapes my mouth the way Zach's expression quickly changes to disappointment. Becca's hand interrupts me just as I'm about to pull her clay plate closer to me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't go all pouty oh, on me interesting. again. Interesting. Interesting. Now you're like, oh, great. Woo. Congratulations because <laughs> you're stealing my free meal. I'm just concerned you'll get hurt if this doesn't happen. I know how badly you want to close this deal for your papa. I'm sure he's going to be fine now, though, with the money. They don't know yet. I think I'll call them tomorrow. Let them know things will be easier. Mama said this morning he's showing progress with the new treatment, too. It's just a matter of time. If something happens to her, I will feel, like, really shitty because of her family back home. Yeah. I allow myself to smile, genuine and uninhibited. It's strange talking about this with other people, even those who have known you a long, long enough. But today, things simply feel a whole lot lighter with them there, here. Lunch passes in an enjoyable fashion. There we go. A laugh here, a playful jab there, but most of it's spent on catching up and telling stories about whatever's keeping us busy these days. 
something we couldn't afford to do the day before, taking into account what happened. Even Becca's surprisingly chatty. Is there something in this sea bass we hate? Zach, though, appears less energetic. While he's far from being the life of the party, he's definitely not the type to keep quiet in a conversation with his friends. Apart from a few inputs, he's been silent the entire time. If Becca notices... Are you sure you're not feeling under the weather, Zachary? Yeah, there we go. Are you hearing voices? Huh? No, I I'm okay. I was, I'm like, maybe his movie premiere didn't go as well as he'd hoped. No, no worries, Rebecca. Hearing voices? Doesn't sound okay to me. It's, it's, it's okay. I might be feeling a little bummed out today, but, but I'm, I'm sure this will pass. Is it about the reviews this morning? Uh, a pained expression crosses Zach's face and almost immediately Becca retreats in her inquiry as though the man's look is enough for her, an, of an answer for her. I look between the two of them. Did I miss something? What happened this morning? Did I stumble on a big secret? This is why I don't like waking up late. You heard about those, huh? Sorry, I just happened to check on some sites this morning. Someone get murdered at one of his no, premieres? No, no, it's, it's, it, it's a very sensitive topic in the first place. Yes. Uh, what I should it? have expected what it. What is it? No, I think, I think he, he didn't get good reviews in his movie. What reviews? Becca glances at Zack, her emotions unsure, eyes asking for his consent on the matter. Although there's a small desire to keep asking on my part, I don't dare voice it out. With Zack, it has always been better to wait, let him speak on his own. Becca too to some extent, although with her, explosions of temper are more common. In the end, he simply answers with a shift of his shoulders, gesturing for her to go on with a tilt of his head. It's his movie. That doesn't explain anything. Stop dangling the information, Becca! Ow. Zachary, I'm not the one supposed to be telling her about this. It's still your documentary. Is it something bad? Not bad, per se. You, you, you guys don't need to dwell on it much. Bad? Listen here! I wouldn't trivialize what those bowheads wrote if I were you. They're ruining other people's jobs! Rogatory term towards something? I have no idea. Uh, from how her tone rises in anger, it seems like she's the one slighted and not Zack. A <laughs> snicker escapes me, which I promptly stamp down as soon as she sends me a hard this look. This isn't a laughing matter, Isabella. Some bow bag just insulted him. Calm down, Rebecca. Those are just reviews, and it happens a lot. So yeah, I'm assuming he he got bad reviews. <sighs> on his I movie. didn't kin about you two, but calling the entire film and. Out and out dribble, you're better off watching an educational kids TV show, and worst one and a half hour of my life, among other things, isn't exactly a critique any decent movie reviewer would say. That is fair, That like that's completely unconstructive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you could call that a critique, did we even watch the same film? Did we look up who this person is? Could it by chance be a dead person without skin? Well, maybe I ain't cut out for it. Better stick with my photography or something. No, Zach, you're good at making movies. We didn't Nothing really else watch this movie. Nothing else me open my eyes to what I can and can't do. You're giving up. It wasn't a question. It was just something experimental I did on my free time anyway. It's, it's no big deal. But you worked on it for months. Doesn't look like it matters for those people. Don't say that! <laughs> my palm strikes the table, sending the tableware on top, clinking against each other. I didn't even notice when I rose from my seat. <laughs> But here I am, chest heaving, looking down at him in the same manner a teacher would at any unruly student. Becca's probably proud. I didn't mean to yell, but there are some things people like Zach aren't supposed to say. How exasperating. He, of all people, should it's know. It's just a review. Except they're pretty well-known critics. Why does that matter? They aren't the ones calling the shots on this. Isn't that why they have a committee? Right, Becca? An amused gleam is in her eyes when I turn to her. Why does she find- what does she find so entertaining here? Help me here. Your friend's about to quit his passion for a petty reason. I haven't read what those people wrote about his work, but a few scathing words shouldn't be enough to discourage someone. I should know, after all, I'm- Failing means you're playing, Zack. Uh, not that I'm saying it's bad. I've seen it from start to finish, and I know for myself what you created isn't something people should scoff at. I don't know anything about filming or photography. Hell, I don't have an inkling of artistry in me except for those doodles I make for class. That's fun. Don't really know why that happened. All right. But I know what I watched. Look at Isabella. It's not every day you see her all riled up like this. Because That's a fair somebody point. insulted our friend. Whatever I'm about to say gets lost in my tongue as a flush of embarrassment blooms across my face. It, it was a heat of the moment thing. And anyway, 
I'll be very angry with you if you quit. What about the exhibit? What exhibit? Classified information. Even oh. if I bring you your favorite tonight? Nope, not a chance. Oh, come on. I thought we aren't supposed to have secrets. <laughs> a burst of laughter comes from Zach. Thanks, you two. Uh, I might need some time alone to myself for a while. Just to think about things, how I'll go from here, that sort of stuff. There you go. Hey, I'm not quitting, Bella. Don't give me that face. There's no face at all, only a poor imitation of a puppy dog eyes, if you could call this one. Promise? I'll be damned if I break any promise I make to you guys. Besides, you're right, it's too early to say anything right now. What's night ain't for another week? And that's all the answer I need from him. As sentimental as it sounds, there's fulfillment in knowing another person you know won't take the same path you've walked. It's not like it's over for me though. I still have time, I could still come back. Do my own thing, do what I really want to do. Surely once Papa recovers, once I'm done with everything, inside my bag my phone buzzes unexpectedly, breaking the pleasant afternoon lull. Screen shows Rose. Hey, Isabel, you at the office? Ha ha, very funny, Rose. I'm hanging up. <laughs> Don't, I'm kidding. BRC says the floor plan copies are ready for Miss McCullough to pick up. She says it as if it's all, as if it already explains everything. Then out of the blue, she launches a long rant about the awful state of Luxborn streets. All of which she says in a single breath that I can barely keep up and make out a single word. I stay quiet, if only to avoid becoming the next subject of object of her frustration. She's similar to Becca in that We're regard. We're stuck in horrendous traffic right now. Bloody stupid drivers. When she, f when she has finally ran out of things to complain about and stops, what she says next still has none of what I'm hoping to hear from her. Just a quick mumbled plea for me to meet the rights interior designer in her stead, and in- Anyway, I'll leave it to you. Bye. Thanks. Wait, what? I thought we were off for the day. Uh, well, no, I think we were just out for lunch. Oh, okay. Classic Rose. She ends the call without even asking for my input. Well, she did do, like, all the work yesterday. True. But to be fair, she wouldn't believe us about, you know, murder, crazy people, letters, Zombies. Zombies. Yeah. Lesson here. You should really trust your friends with that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Uh, the sky is cloudless, and the noontime sun is beating down on the hard concrete when we leave the cafe. It's far from unbearable, but it's enough to put most people in a fickle mood or make them vulnerable to catching something. No wonder we have staff members going AWOL lately, not to mention my boss's mercurial moods. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I want our usual cloudy weather back. For all the gripes about the unpredictable weather, though, the streets of Luxbourne remain constantly busy. The hurried tapping of shoes against the pavement and inane chatter coming from the lunchtime crowd fill the humid afternoon air. A small reminder of things we still have to do, regardless of how much I want to return to the comfort of my bed. Back to Briar Realty for me, Zach to a meeting with a magazine publisher featuring luxury houses, okay, and Becca to her lesson plans and books at home. But more than once, I catch her sneaking a longing glance over something displayed on a shop window. Did she want to buy something? Maybe I can get it for her this Christmas. I turn my head at last at the last shop she checked out. A fleeting glimpse. The world stills. Oh. Oh, hello. Does Becca want you for Christmas? We would yeah. happily buy you. She looks at me, eyes hollowed, gaze piercing and boring into my very soul like a set of chains to keep my whole body still. There are no shadows or whispers this time. Only a plea. A hum. Low and indistinct. Compelling me, beckoning me, intent on dragging me to the void beyond the glass. I, I did a better job. You did, you did good. I don't dare move. My heart hammers against my ribs, each beat, every thump, screaming at me to look away and make a run for it. But I can't. I couldn't. All my limbs feel heavy, my own breathing strains in the face of her calls. So maybe she wasn't after us to kill us. I don't know, why did she leave us that threatening message about help me, help me, help me, send this to five friends? Uh, maybe, maybe we're going to need more people to help us. Takes five people to put a vengeful something to rest? I think so. Uh, all of my limbs feel heavy while my own breathing strains in the face of her calls. Help me. Leave me alone. Her mouth is stretched in a grin, wide and unpleasant. The panic building up in my chest forces me to take a tentative step back. I try not to stare at the decaying flesh, the blood streaming from the gaping wounds on her arms and her nailless fingers. I don't want this. Not like this. Not after what I want. I got what I want from oh Papa. No, no. Stop. Leave me alone. 
Her face contorts and she lets out a wail, sharp and utterly unforgiving. Rage. There's only hatred and bitterness, as if the very notion of turning away from her is an offense in itself. Please! I don't want this! <laughs> Before I know it, I'm stumbling backwards, my own throat hoarse from the screams I didn't even notice already coming out of my mouth. Where's Becca? Wasn't I was she wondering. Right with me? The back of my feet catches on a loose stone, sending me sprawling to the ground. The resulting pain completely jolts me out of the haze blurring my mind. For a little while, my surroundings appear unfamiliar until Becca's face swims into my vision. A look of concern is on her face, and her hands are gripping my arms tight. Oh, so we prob- like, they were probably like trying to snap us out of it and we weren't realizing it. Even Zack appears beside himself with worry while he stands uh, uh, behind her, acting as a shield against the small crowd of onlookers already forming around what us. What happened? Bella, you okay? My mouth opens and closes, but nothing comes out. The words refuse to form. On impulse, I sneak a swift glance at the display window. She's gone. Yet the foreboding feeling hasn't left me. My hands are shaking as I push myself off the ground, my weakened limbs relying solely on reflex and muscle memory. Something icy has made its home in, at the pit of my stomach. I want to throw up anything to get the wretched sensation you out. You are screaming! Zack, call someone! No, don't! I'm good. I'm good! I need... I need to get to the office. Rose, the floor plans. Someone's going to pick it up. I, I'll see you later. Be careful! Don't stand up yet! Stay put, Isabella. Zack, you watch over her for me. I'll call for... Uh, for someone. I attempt a smile to put her at ease, but it likely comes off as a grimace. Gently, I pushed her hands off my shoulders. My knees are still trembling, but I can stand. Leave. Leave me. Stay away. Away. The humidity stifling. Everyone's stares are unnerving, and Becca and Zack's concerns are suffocating. I don't want to be here. No more. I break into a run. I wish I hadn't left my bed this morning. Here, with only the occasional drips of water on the sink and the whirring of the fan blades to keep me company, it's easy to fall into a cycle of negative thinking. But even when the clutter, with the clutter to keep me company, the room still feels a whole lot bigger than usual. I hug my knees closer as a group passes by outside. Loud. So loud. If only there was a way to tune, out ev to tune everything out, to keep my head from replaying every image, every sound of her. Her screams, her awkward gait as she reaches for me, her bone-chilling smile, her pleas for... Enough. That's enough. A shiver passes over me. Though it's not from the hair still hanging damp against my back, nor the draft that enters the room from the windows I've left wide so open. So do we think Becca saw her, too, in the window? That's actually a good question. Um... It's definitely possible, mm -hmm. and she's just kind of like holding it together better, like kind of thinking to herself like that can't uh, I can't I be what I think it that. is. Yeah. Although it seemed like it almost seems like Isabella gets ripped out of reality for a second. Like she's still there. All the actions she's taking are occurring in real life, but like what she sees isn't real. Yeah. Okay. At least that's how it seems. My gaze shifts over the letter sitting on the coffee table. Its edges flutter innocuously as the wind touches it. Funny how an ordinary looking piece of paper can bring this much trouble. The impulse to throw it away or rip it to pieces is still there. I can easily do it, but after that, what? Will she leave me? What about those people who have already seen it? Will they be okay? This uncertainty gnaws at me, knowing that she's real and might also go after the people I care about. I just wish someone would listen. Believe me. The abrupt break in the silence nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Blindly, I fish out my phone from under the mess of papers and cushions where I've carelessly thrown it before taking a shower hours ago. Ash's name flashes brightly on the screen. Oh, this is probably about, uh... Andrew. The guy who's gonna, like, help us out. Oh, from the movie theater. yeah, I forgot about that. Yep, mm -hmm. Is he calling because of this Thank afternoon? Thank you so much for spamming my inbox, scaredy cat. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ash. What's wrong? I just had a long day. The couple who bought the house wanted us to finish processing the papers within the week. It's a little hectic, but we'll manage. Really? You sold it? Don't sound so surprised. I told you, you don't stand a chance. The rights won't take no for an answer. So he's not gonna buy the house. You've been on the losing end from the very start. Ha! Whoever said I was interested in the house in the first place? You did. But you said... <laughs> Despite his light tone, his snicker only comes off as annoying to my ears. I have to fight the urge to end the call right then and there. Stupid You're ash. Such an ass. And just ash. so you know, I'm not treating you to a separate celebration. Or ever. No, that's just unfair. And here I was looking something up for you. Didn't you say you wanted to talk to Andrew? Yes. Yeah, there we go. Now, today, this minute. 
I pause. I did say that, but I didn't think he'd actually go through with the trouble, considering how much he scoffed at the whole topic in the first is place. He, is he okay with that? Totally. Besides, I need to ask him about something. I might as well do it soon. What do you say you come with me tomorrow morning? Well, there's no harm in it, I suppose. I've got a free day anyway. Great, I'll just pick you up. Don't oversleep. Us oversleep never. Don't compare me to you. I'm not the one who sleeps like a rock. <laughs> Another round of chuckles come from him. Oh, I will live for the day. He'll stop making fun of me. Just wait, you, you, you asshole. Still love that. <laughs> As I'm about to end the call, he clears his and, throat. And, uh, Isabella? Yes. yes. His sudden dif mm -hmm. diffident tone sends my eyebrows shooting up into my hairline. Are you asking hairline. me out on a date? Is the world I need yeah. today? Did you forget something? Are you... Do you think you... Bit it out. We... Come on. Come on. Never no! We need some romance to go with all this yeah. angst. Horror. Yeah, you know, that's kind of... That's thing go hand in hand. Angst and horror. Angst, horror, romance. Relationships. Yeah. He hangs up instantly. Rude. Completely rude. Didn't even get to thank him. The busy tone, though muffled, echoes through the receiver. No one is saying this will work. Even I'm doubtful it will. But right now, I'll take anything. Anything to get out of this nightmare. Sleep comes easier tonight. And for the first time in a long time, I dream. Of clear skies, of unrestrained laughter from children playing in the streets, and of small cramped dwellings. To an outsider, the sight does not paint a pretty picture. However, this is home to me. Dun dun dun, it's Sunday. It is Sunday, and... and we still haven't cleaned our room. Nope, we'll just have to clean our room in the next episode. <laughs> Maybe that's what the chick wants. Yeah, She's like, my god, you your live... room is so messy <laughs> that if you don't clean it, I'm gonna murder you. In such clutter, it is offensive to the undead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, that's going to do it for us. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.